Hey guys, welcome to another episode of I Stalk Koreans and I find some new picks that are a little bit different or much better now in 7.12 so far. You'll find some new stuff that's not in your games in this video, but as always, let me know what you think is going to be much better in the comments. Now, timestamps and even just a list of the champions are in the descriptions, but first off, I just wanted to mention something with haste. It's helped a lot of people recently with their lag issues, load pings, not for everybody, but for a lot of you, but yeah, the beta is ending next month and it won't be entirely free anymore. It's still free for now and there's going to be lots of like special offers and stuff if you are part of the beta so basically just a heads up if you're ever thinking of trying it give it a quick go now download it in the description and if you choose to carry on later you'll save a bunch of dollar Anyway, starting off this video with something a bit different, a weird one. Zack Jungle is not as overpowered anymore over there, but Zack's support actually is. Lockett is so strong on tanks now, so they're definitely going to be helping, but he's basically a good counter to mage supports. With Soraka and Karma and Lulu and stuff like that, they sit right at the back, away from danger, but they can't really do that versus a slingshot from Zack. This is basically the whole reason it works. Like, against other aggressive supports, Thresh, Blitzcrank and stuff is not that great, but against squishy ones, he's really good. Build is just like face of the mountain with Lockett, Knight's Val, even just random tank items afterwards or a redemption maybe. We're definitely abusing how strong he actually is as a champion, but thinking about it, really good CC, okay damage, paired amazingly well with like any sort of semi-aggressive AD carry, so you have this good snowball and a carry support to mess around with. He does have a really good early game and a decent mid game. Early you've got the 2v2 fighting, right? And mid game you can engage for your team. He's not like amazingly defensively though, he doesn't really offer very much. Overall maybe it's not the most legit pick ever, but it's super good at countering the meta for now. Like he's so good at engaging and getting ahead so it kind of makes sense. I pick this comeback massively this patch is Shaco. So this isn't even just high reload over there anymore which is strange but it's crit burst Shaco. Crit items are cheaper now right? Lametta is full of lower health stuff and other carry junglers got nerfed so he kind of comes back because of all of that. Weirdly enough he seems to be the Gragas counter more than anything in Korea but he also nails Lee Sin, Zac, Warwick, Kha'Zix, all these top tier things we see a lot. Build stuff though, Shiv second, that buff must have helped into Affinity Edge most of the time, Hydra, Guardian Angel as well. It's just full damage and full assassin burst now. I think the AD carry meta is going to help a bit as well, right? Like that's the person you're going to be targeting more than anybody else. Twitch, Jinx, even a Caitlyn a little bit, like you can stealth in and one shot them pretty easy. Shaco is a really good win rate, like early to mid game as pretty much we always expect. Then he dips a little bit while you can't one shot someone mid game and it's back to like OP late game though. If a game goes past 40 minutes in career with Shaco in it, his team actually wins 64% of the time and that is crazy high. Overall, we haven't really seen him for a while, but he's definitely back taking a dump on people. He punishes like weaker junglers big time and the whole meta is really low health I guess which helps. So we have two AD carries here that are better after the patch. But the first one is the best AD in bronze and silver by a mile. Like one of the only that wins more games than they lose actually. Miss Fortune is basically one of the easiest to play. Like she's not even really an AD carry and a beast early game so you can actually fight in this fiesta that is lower ranks. She actually even beats uh, Twitch most of the time which is really good but she destroys Ash Illusion which is where most of the OP kind of win rate comes from. Basically you can win a game is misfortune using like two autos per fight it's ridiculous you use q spam in lane right just bouncing off a minion you use your ultimate from far away you attack once to finish them off maybe that's barely even an ad carry by my standards really you don't have to attack move or anything like i know you should and like you can trade with your love tab but you don't have to for her to work we're actually back to lethality as well ghost bay dust blade black lever probably the only champion in the game who does this anymore but it actually works your win rate is best early game as we kind of expect it dips a little bit but it's actually very good late game like her ultimate ultimate scaling is really good and she can hit everybody in a fight remember so it's a lot of damage overall you are the best low low AD carry by a mile all you have to worry about is pressing that Q button on the minions and pressing R at the right time it's super easy but it's a lot of damage now Jinx is actually the other one a bit more higher low but still okay at lower ranks as well like the opposite of misfortune though sucks in lane but one of the best late game champions one of the reasons is because crit is cheaper right she outscales most people and I also think games in general are going a bit longer now so that kind of just makes her better she's also very good against Zaya apparently. Kind of the Zaya counter at the moment. It makes sense, right? Her rockets are going to be outranging her feathers, so she can't really ever use her E. When you think about it, she's got to be the easiest AD to play as well, right? There's not much she can do to outplay and carry and stuff like that, but just for right clicking, I don't know if anybody does more damage. Most people are going rapid fire in Korea at the moment still for the extra long rocket, but Shiv isn't that bad actually. Like you have a lot of AoE damage, though we are always using Runins first for wave clear and those beast AoE rocket crits. This is actually what makes her deadly right now. Like you leave her 
her alone and she gets one reset her attack speed goes through the roof plus you can't catch her anymore it's kind of like a katarina reset it's really underrated it's so good that if you last past 25 minutes in a game you're already top five win rate for the rest of the game like the entire game it's nuts the reason she's here is because she's such a mid and late game monster really like if you're going to lose on jinx it's most likely going to be in the first 25 minutes you get like snowballed on if not then you stand such a good chance to carry sejuani after a rework was so overpowered right but then pretty bad the last few patches now all of a sudden she's back to top five top lane and in the jungle top lane is stronger at the moment so we're going to focus on that for now abyssal mask and iceborne help a lot with your damage but to be honest she just takes no damage that's the biggest thing the reason she wins is because carry picks cannot kill her it's legit the dumbest reason to ever win a game but yeah like yasuo kled darius cannot do anything so she wins anyway i'm not sure about you but if i was playing against someone like that who didn't have to really do anything to beat me that'd be pretty tilting that mostly applies against ad though okay so like sunfire ice spawn are way better than anything else first we could get as a magic resist item so like mask afterwards and stone plate but you're much better against ad champions the thing is she's like never super strong at any stage of the game but she's always decent if that makes sense like there's no phase in the game where you can say she is weak but she is better late game in huge team fights with her crowd control overall you're basically an annoying tank who shuts down any ad champion you also have some good damage but if you play top lane and you want to counter pick to like yasuo or darius or kled fiora then sejuani is the one to go for now this is a little bit the opposite but swain in every elo bronzer diamond is one of the strongest picks right now in the entire game i think it's one of the most obnoxious things to play against actually in the lane phase like you pretty much can't do anything against his poke and then when he hits level six you all in him and he's going to out heal your damage when you're playing against him anything that relies even a little bit of getting ahead early is smashed by swain because you just can't honestly so he's good versus kennen or pantheon rumble Jax galio like not so much versus riven or fiora or yasuo though i actually really love having a swain on my team because he builds rod of ages zonya visage rylai's and basically every item is kind of tanky but he still does a lot of damage that means for me like i have a big front line who normally always wins his lane he puts the enemy top laner behind so they're weaker but what is not to love about that really swain's win rate is so overpowered early game but if you don't end it by like 35 minutes then you're probably in trouble they'll counter your healing and they're gonna burn through your ultimate as well overall i honestly think he's basically the best thing you can play top lane in my opinion he's pretty easy super strong lots of damage and tanky enough that if you mess it up it doesn't really matter now the newest out of nowhere jungler though who stat wise is ridiculously overpowered is evelyn if i'm honest i'm a little bit stuck on this one like why she's so good right now when nothing really changed that much like even her matchups didn't get nerfed last patch she's very good against other carry junglers basically so against tanks not very much because she can't burst them but anybody she can burst she can be that's why it's kind of weird like i know there's lots of low health picks around and stuff so maybe it just took a few patches for the changes to catch up and people to realize how good she is build wise it is like full ap burst damage at the moment and that is why she's so good early like obviously with her ganking and her damage and stuff then she's very good at like three items when she can one shot people again she kind of sucks at two items a little bit though if she can't get ahead because she can't really burst and she's very squishy i like to think of eve as a bit of a cheese pick right but definitely better now and not something i expected from this patch either i know she's never that popular which is why we're kind of skipping over her a little bit but something cool to mess around with at least now the weirdest one here is mordecai's the top lane i've left the weirdest till last he's actually beast mode for this patch for the early game at least he's actually very strong in the lane phase so like swain really i guess uh on steroids really anything that wants to get ahead he'll just smash into the ground we're talking mostly like galio darius or renex and kled as well stuff like that that you can be early and make a bit more useless i guess i left him till last because i know most people don't play him but it's gone from one of like the worst top laners to one of the best in a single patch it's pretty funny build wise it's like gunblade leandry's rylai's and after that the game is probably over one way or the other anyway and i'm not kidding by the way with the win rate before 35 minutes it's insanely high but after that it plummets so hard like not even 50 percent and super late game he loses almost 60 percent of games overall it's a bit of a weird pick i think but something cool to cheese a few wins against some of the most annoying meta slay picks if you fancy it plus losing to a more top lane definitely makes you feel proper bad the last one i want to talk about very quickly is going to be Jarvan. so he kind of came out of nowhere i guess if you weren't paying much attention but he's been played in the lck so the korean professional league all the time right now so that is why he's so popular in korea right now he's played mostly top lane actually but i think he's stronger in the jungle his win rate is better and he has some really good matchups he's basically like the ad version of elise if that makes sense like he's really aggressive early he can gank a lot and put a lot of pressure down but he has a ton of damage mid game while getting relatively tanky it's kind of this two item combo where we go into black cleaver and titanic hydra like the two of them together synergize really well you're going to be doing a lot more damage with your titanic and also have like these tanky stats as well he's going to be beating people like lee sin elise graves even zach as well gragas like all of these meta carry picks i guess he just kind of outshines in one way or another the thing with Jarvan at the moment though in the jungle is he's 
very early game focus. This is why I compare him to release as well. Like the first three phases of the game, so up to about 35 minutes into it, he's really strong. He can gank, he can burst people, but after that, he kind of falls off a little bit. He doesn't have damage to one burst people anymore. He basically becomes an engaged while you dive in, use your ultimate, and then you kind of just die afterwards. So it's a really good carry pick if you can get ahead. Normally, I wouldn't really suggest something where you kind of have to get ahead, otherwise you're a bit useless. But honestly, it's really not that hard to get ahead on Jarvan. Like you have good early clear, you have good early ganks with your EQ. And when you get your ultimate, you can pretty much one burst anybody. Overall, I think he's probably one of the most well-rounded carry picks you can actually play at the moment. He has a lot of burst damage while staying relatively tanky. And I think he's one of the best early game junglers. Anyway, thank you for watching the video until the very end. Enjoy your weekend. But for now, I'll leave you with the robots.